Hi everyone, this is the first video in the Density Lab series. There are three parts to the Density Lab, which is designed to address the three goals listed here. To use density as a way to compare the precision of volumetric glassware, to determine if density is an extensive or intensive property, and to use density to help identify an unknown metal. In the first video, I will discuss just the first part of the lab. Now let's start by reviewing the concept of density. Recall that density of a substance is just its mass divided by its volume. The mass is typically measured on a balance, while the volume is measured using some type of a glassware, such as a graduated cylinder or burette. Because the precision of these instruments differ, the resulting measurements will have different number of significant figures. The resulting density must have the same number of significant figures as the less precise measurement. So let's apply that idea in this example. So we have a metal sample with mass of 10.556 grams and volume of 2.04 milliliter. We can calculate the density by taking the mass divided by the volume. In the calculation, I changed the volume unit to cubic centimeter because we're calculating the density of a solid. The calculated answer has many digits, but the correct answer must only have three significant figures because the instrument that's being used to measure the volume, which only gives us three significant figures. So the final density must be written as 5.17 grams per cubic centimeter. Now let's talk about the actual experiment in part A. What you're doing is calculating the density of deionized water by measuring the mass and volume of a sample of water. The mass will be calculated by taking the difference between the mass of an empty beaker with the mass of the beaker filled with the water sample. The volume though are going to be measured with a different glassware in each of the three experiments. The glassware is going to be a 100 milliliter graduate cylinder, a 10 milliliter volumetric pipette, and a 50 milliliter burette. So we will repeat the experiment three times, each time using a new glassware to measure the volume of the sample. So I want to explain to you how you should fill in the data in your lab report for part A. As you see here, there are three columns. Each column corresponds to a specific glassware that you're going to use to measure the volume. So when you're using graduated cylinder to measure the volume of your water, all the values are going to be written in this column. When you're using the volumetric pipette, to measure the volume, everything goes to column number two. When the burette is used to measure volume, all the values are going to go to the third column. Now there are several goals to accomplish in part A of this lab. First, you really want to learn how to use each of these glasswares correctly. And that really means reading the volume the correct way for each of the glassware. Secondly, you want to make sure that you calculate the density and apply significant figure rules to determine the final answer. And lastly, you Use the data gathered by the whole class to calculate statistical quantities that will help us determine which of these three glasswares have the highest precision. All right, your lab procedure gives you step-by-step -step methods but I find that students seem to misunderstand the steps. So here, what I would do is describe a revised procedure, which hopefully makes it easier for you to understand what you need to do. First, there are two types of glasswares in every chemistry lab. One type of glassware is used merely to hold chemical reagents, not used to measure, because they have very low precision. Glasswares that belong in this category are beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks, and test tubes. You may see markings on some of these glasswares, but those markings are too imprecise to be used for any actual measurement. Now, the second type of glasswares is the glasswares that are used to measure volume. These glasswares have varying precision, but as a group, they are all more precise than the glasswares that are just used to hold liquid. So examples of these more precise glasswares are graduated cylinders, burette, volumetric pipettes, and volumetric flasks. The the precision of these glasswares depend on their size. The smaller the glassware, the more precise it can measure the volume. So for example, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder will be more precise than a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. In many labs, you will be asked to use a specific size beaker or Erlenmeyer flask. You want to keep in mind that these containers were chosen not because they are used to measure the liquid, but only because they are used to hold the liquid. 
Now, if you're being asked to use a specific size graduated cylinder or pipette, for example, that's because you're expected to measure with those glasswares. Okay, let's now move to the lab itself. Remember that you're going to calculate density of water three times. So the first thing you want to do is just get your sample of water. So you're going to get about 50 milliliter of the ionized water, put that water in a medium sized beaker. Now for the actual experiment, you're going to need a smaller beaker. So you got 50 milliliter, you're going to take a little bit of it and put it in the smaller beaker and you're going to make the measurement of mass in that smaller beaker. So measure the mass of the small beaker when it's empty in a balance and record that mass in the space here that's marked by the orange color labeled mass of empty beaker. Take the medium sized beaker that has that 50 milliliter of water and just pour approximately 12 milliliter into a 100 milliliter graduate cylinder, okay? To figure out exactly how much volume you have, you're gonna read it from the graduated cylinder and you're gonna follow the steps below. First, you're gonna have to determine the size of the markings on the graduated cylinder. Now, very often when I ask students to do this, the answer I get is always that the marking is 0.1 milliliter. This is not always true. The size of these marks depends on the size of the graduated cylinder that you're using. It may be one milliliter, it may be 0.1 milliliter, it may be 0.01 or some other value. So just to illustrate this example, I have a graduated cylinder here in this picture and the size of the mark is actually one milliliter. I know this because there are 10 milliliters and there are 10 marks, so that means that each mark must be one milliliter. Okay. Step two is to determine at which two mark the meniscus of the liquid is located. In the example I'm showing you here, the meniscus is exactly at the 24 milliliter mark. In some other cases, you may see that the meniscus is between two marks. So for example, it may be between 19 and 20 milliliter. Once you figure out where the meniscus is, the last step is to add one more digit to your reading of the volume. So for example, in this graduate cylinder meniscus is at 24 milliliters so I will say that the volume is 24.0 milliliters so that 0, 0.0 is my estimate of the level of the meniscus so as I said earlier if the meniscus is between two values let's say between 19 and 20 milliliter you can say that the volume is 19.5 milliliter for example so again the 0.5 here is your estimate okay so to wrap up the final volume I would write down is 24.0 milliliter for the example in this graduated cylinder, which is a three significant figure number for my volume. Now in your actual experiment, right, your volume will be somewhere closer to 12 milliliter because that's approximately how much you pour into the graduate cylinder from the beaker. So you're going to read the exact value of that volume. Once you read the actual volume of the water in the cylinder, write that in the space marked by the blue rectangle here, which is labeled actual volume of water use. Now, once you have that written down, you want to pour the water from the graduated cylinder into that small beaker that you measure the mass of earlier. Now, you're going to measure the mass of the beaker with the water in it and record it in the space marked by this yellow rectangle. You can then calculate the mass of just the water by subtracting the mass of the beaker plus water Water from the mass of the empty beaker. Once you have the mass of the water and the volume of the water, you can divide one by the other one to get the density of the water. Now, you want to make sure that your final density value has the correct number of significant figures based on the significant figures of these two measurements right here. Okay, so what you just did is finish filling in the values for the first column of part A, which is for using the graduated cylinder to measure the volume of the water. In the next video, I will describe the other two devices that you're going to use to measure the volume for this portion of the lab.